Welcome back to another awesome video. Today we've got this RCA VHS camcorder. It's really old and I think it sort of works. At least it comes on, right? Yeah. Your, uh, your uncle gave this to you. We got the VHS camcorder. We're going to put a HD camcorder from about 2008 up there. And then of course we got this camera which is 4K. So this footage doesn't look like it was recorded in 2023. What do you think? Pretty good. Yeah. Here's the same scene recorded on an also outdated HD camera from 2008. And of course the 4K footage from the Sony Alpha for reference. While we're on the subject of home video, I looked around the house and found all these formats I used. I started with film, some old 50s and 60s hand-me-down equipment in the 80s. Film, which you had to send off to get developed. And then I always wanted a video camera because you could erase and make your own movies and tapes. Never could quite afford one. Of course, I came out with these bulky video cameras that just took a VHS tape directly. We couldn't afford those. By the time we could afford something in 1990, we had 8mm video. So we had a Sony camcorder with 8mm video. And then eventually we're moving into digital, still not HD. We had this. Then, of course, in about the you know mid to late 2000s, we had SD card and all the tapes and film went away. You can definitely tell the difference, and it's amazing how far we have come in the past 36 years in terms of quality. You know, you got the widescreen aspect ratio, you got 4x3, you got better resolution. That's why we, on this channel, we mostly do audio equipment, because I can enjoy old audio equipment from the 70s. Don't think I can enjoy old video equipment uh, as much. Um, it does give that found footage look. Yes, it does look old, even though this was recorded in 2023. Now, before we continue repairing the VHS camcorder, let's talk about this VHSC cam camera you bought. It was 10 bucks, and unfortunately we couldn't get it to work, so let's just take a small detour and talk about it and what we did with VHSC for a second. Interesting about this, you've got a VHSC right here. This is sort of a hack. It's basically they just took VHS and then cut out a piece of it. As a matter of fact, you can play these in a regular VHS VCR. You just gotta have one of these adapters and you eject this it's battery powered you put this in here i never never owned one of these never would invest in that kind of format but and what you'll see is it it basically the battery little double a battery makes that come out and it simulates a vhs tape and when you got it you can eject it you could of course also play these back in the camcorder you know maybe my battery's loose there we go it will eject this thing back out of there so hmm. i wish you could get the viewfinder to work I think it has a power supply problem because it won't work with the viewfinder hooked up. So, and it also won't work through the DC output, but we can get one of the old batteries to work by just clipping that on there. Because like we can power it down, let's see, and power it back on, and it will not, it will not power up unless we first disconnect the viewfinder. Then when we disconnect the viewfinder, we get a picture. Once we let the motor do its thing, and that burst of power, we can then connect that the viewfinder. Noise. That's the uh, probably the head spinning up or something. I'm trying to hold this and film at the same time, so it's a little bit. Oh yeah, so once we connect this, there we go. Then we get the display on there. We lose power, you can tell that's getting there. And then, but oh, look at that, that's fired up, so yeah. So, my conclusion with this camcorder is it has a power supply problem. And unfortunately, it's not really worth it. I mean, if you look at that, you know, we, we already had to dig out tons of screws to get to this point. And I'm not sure how to get into the rest of it, but we'll see. More than that, he gave you uh, something else, right? He gave you two of these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is crazy. So hopefully we'll, we'll see. This one comes on and produces a picture, but the eject doesn't work. So for the remainder of the video, it's just going to be footage of us trying to get this old 1987 camcorder working. I don't know the particular history of this camera. Uh, <laughs> All I know, it came from 1987. Well, yeah. It was purchased in 1987, which uh, it was Look a long, long, long time ago. Oh, yeah, that part comes off. Yeah, that's... Uh, that The viewfinder is detachable. Here, you got to unlock it so, it, so, it, so that you... Uh, you can put it in this the case because it's not sticking out. Yeah, and a lot of stuff has deteriorated, like all the plastic, all well, the... Well, uh, some, 
the bike hider on this one barely yeah, has barely. Yeah, show, hold that up to the camera. That thing is. Uh, this is a second one. Yeah, but look at the foam is deteriorated. I just got to show you how old this stuff is. I mean, 19, also... 1987 was a long time ago. All right, let's see. All right, so there's the thing. It's, so you can see, you, you basically have a VCR, you know, you're basically carrying around a VCR, you know, you can imagine that you got the spinning video heads and all that stuff would probably not be, uh, I already see the problem. There, uh, you, you get your phone flashlight and aim it in there. So probably the reason is it's not ejecting is there's no belt on that pulley. Let's see if we can get that where you can see it. So there, there's supposed to be a belt on that, so we got to get to the back side of this. Whoop. Two screws at the back, two screws at the top. But that looks like we're also going to have to maybe get some screws up here. And these are different sizes. So once we get these out, I think I'm going to probably going to put them back in the hole so we don't knock them around and forget where they go. Hang on. Maybe I didn't. Yep, yep. There it goes. So we're getting all this. by wires. Nope. All right, now. Ah. Oh, look. You can't even. <laughs> a lot of circuits and you can't really get to the belt as easily. But uh, so we're going to have to take, this, take this off too. But Help. Clipped in. Like, see this little plastic thing? That thing looks like it's clipped in. I didn't realize this till later in the video, but this is actually a hinged circuit board and it folds up so you can easily get to the parts underneath. Like how many minutes are on a VHS tape? Well, interesting you should say that. They're, uh, they're tapes, they're like 120 minutes is two hours at the slow speed or six hours at the fast speed. This, this thing actually has a T160 tape. So T160 was a little bit longer tape that came out, a thinner tape. Uh, what is that? It has a T160 tape switch, I should take it. What is this? Uh, this one is a, it'll say on there. This belt here is completely gone, right here, and there's goo on that thing. I don't know if that, is that even turning? It reminds me, I mean, it I didn't remind me because I don't know how to do it, but surgery, right? You know, you're dealing with something very complex. You don't even know, or will never know how this was designed, but you know enough to get in there and work around and try to fix something, and there's a danger you could hurt the patient. All right, yeah, so we were able to get that one around there, but it's too big. Let's try this one next, this middle size. If that's too big, we'll go to the small size. Okay, here goes. Power up. I don't know if, yeah, okay, it's got power. All right, hang on. Now we're going to try eject. Look, it worked. We ejected. It made a weird noise. So I guess that belt's good enough. All right. Okay, let's so put we'll, it all back together. All right, let's power it up. Oh, yeah, there's a little stand at the back on this battery. Did you notice that? So that you can... Flip the stand down, and then that way when you're pressing the buttons, it doesn't. All right, so now power it up. Power up. Let's see if it... Okay, we do have a picture. I can see my hand in there. Okay. Now, let's get our test tape. Let's see. Now, the, hopefully it won't eat the tape. I should get a cruddier tape to test that. Probably a decent one. Nothing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I don't think it's... Why is it not? It's not sensing the tapes in or something. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Look at that! Ugh, having trouble threading it. Let's see if it'll. Is it unthreading it? Yeah, I think it stopped. It's trying. It just may need some. Let's see if we can play. Oh, yeah. We got some other belt problems. I bet you it's that pinch roller. Let's see if we can fast forward or rewind. Stop. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Ooh, see if we can play. Play. All oh, right, we're on camera mode, so we should record. Okay. So now we've got a old a TV with video inputs, and go ahead and plug that plug it in. Let's just see if the camera will show up on the TV instead of the uh, instead of that, and you'll probably see a view of this isopropyl alcohol sitting over here. Maybe my drill, <laughs> if that works. Power it up. Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, and of course we got some feedback. Echo. Let's focus. Yeah, there we go. There's our isopropyl. I'm gonna mute the TV because that's gonna get annoying. Where's mute? Ah, there we go. All right. Okay. All right. See, I don't. I don't think this pinch roller. I mean, I don't think the pinch roller can actually turn it. Yeah, I don't think it. <coughs> it's trying to record, but it's not able to. Go back over to playback. We were so close. This thing is a <coughs> VCR test simulation tape. So basically you can still see inside. So let's see if, it, if the pinch roller is actually doing anything. Yeah, look at that. 
Oh, wait, is it, it pulled the tape in. Hang on. Yeah, it's just not, let's see if we can get it to play, or pause. That's unloading the tape, probably gonna eject. Let's see, play. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's the belt, look. Hang on, pause. What? Yeah, maybe that other belt. Look, there we go. So that's, that, I thought it was the pinch roller, but I think it's just, it can't, that belt's no good in there or something, hang on. Where's the belt? See if I can make it, make it forward. It's that other, but we should have replaced that other belt while we're in there, I think. Okay. It's not, let's stop and see if we can. It's a pleasant surprise for once. Whoever built this, put this ground wire in there so it's disconnectable, which is awesome. Then I can flip the whole circuit board back. I could have gotten to this belt a lot easier. Now I'll be able to get to this belt, which I think is the problem, is this belt is just loose. Or no, that belt, that flat one, is just loose. I was able to undo this like plastic gizmo, which let me get some slack out of this, which let me get these wires out of this these hooks on this plate. Now I'll be able to take the plate out and replace that belt. Ooh, By yeah. the way, I'm recording. Okay. All right, so there's the metal plate. There's our belts. Gee, that was There's crazy. the suspect, get them. What's happening is the, mo the motor is turning and then the pressure, the pinch rod is wrong, it wasn't the pinch roll or the tape. Is not, it's not able to turn the tape because there's not. it's got to turn all this stuff. Now the question is, do I have a belt that'll fit there? Oh, let me look and see. <laughs> see, I got my bag of cheap Amazon flat belts again. Oh, oh hang on. Cheap belts. Ah. Let me craft, craft that up. All right, yeah, so let's see. This. Well, first of all, I'm going to remove this belt. Just set that aside. Then I'm, I'm going to... Some belts are still intact. Yeah, look at this. This guy is like just floppy. All right, so there's the original bye one. Bye-bye, floppy belt. That one doesn't look that great either, but you know, we're not gonna waste a lot of money on this thing because it's not going to be. It's just gonna be used by me. And it's, I mean, you would never, I mean, and that's the thing about all the old audio stuff we work on can still sound good, but this old video is not gonna, this old video stuff is not gonna look like HD. All right, so that seems like it turns, has a little bit better grip. Well, it gives that found footage feel. Yeah, yeah it definitely does that. Try a different tape. So there's a blurry picture of Brian Wilson of the uh, Beach Boys there. Back up a little so you see the thing. So yeah, so the VCR, let's try cleaning the heads or something. Because I don't, it just can't track very well. Let's see, fast forward. Yeah, you're just not getting a good tracking kind of deal. Let's see if I can, there we go. <laughs> Lay it down. There we go. There we got something. That's fast domino. Yeah. See if it'll work. If it'll work like this, you can sort of record and there we go. So look, it will record. So let's put a tape in. Right. See if we can record. So as we know it worked, of course we got a little wrinkle tape there. There's the VHS versus the HD again, but Pretty cool that we're able to take something that's 36 years old and repair it. Just as a consumer, I doubt I could do that with like an iPhone or something. That's a pretty good hour's work on this thing. Uh, next time we'll try to get the other camcorder working. It, its date says 88, so it may be a little bit newer. We'll see what kind of condition it's in. And we'll also charge this old battery and see if it'll, I don't doubt it'll hold a, a charge being almost 40 years old, but who knows? Battery doesn't work. Yeah, the battery yeah. didn't work, but to capture all this footage, we pulled out a Windows PC out of the closet, and I used this little device I've had for a while called the the Canopus AVDC100, and just hooked a VCR up to that, and it went in through the FireWire card on this old PC. Anyway, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time for another awesome video. Thanks.